stroll down memory lane, the old Hogan shows, what we used to laugh at back in the 70s and the 80s. Um, it was very funny at the time, and some of it's still funny now. And some of it, I'm uh, not sure what I was thinking. But anyway, pull up a pew, there's nothing on the other channels, and sit down and have a look. Hope you enjoy it. Good day, viewers. We've uh, selected the highlights of all the shows we've done this year, all the most popular segments, stuck them all together in one lump, and for the want of a more imaginative title, call them The Best of Hogan. Have a look, see what you think. Right, let's drop. Ready, mate? In That's Ridiculous, you'll see the remarkable Neo actually catch an arrow between his bare teeth. I really didn't know what to do. Then I discovered soothing Vaseline. Now his nappy rash has completely gone. And believe me, we couldn't be happier. Hey. Hi. Drop, mate. In the shower, son. Now listen. Kettle's on when you make a cup of tea. Well, while you're there, mate, Anderson and washing up, will you? <laughs> Tests of strength before, but never one like this. Yes, Leo Wanker will attempt the impossible. Using brute strength alone, he'll prevent this high-powered car from moving off. Just one, the push, one big. 
Un pic. O să cum e pe rejaz, e pe rejaz, e pe rejaz. De fapt, eu este 69, Fisco. Zic că nu, pisoa. threshold of a new era in television. Violence, sex and dirty stuff is under censorship attack in America. So next season, instead of Starsky and Hutch, you'll be seeing Donnie and Marie. <laughs> no, seriously, instead of Serpico, I'll be something like the Brady Bunch. <laughs> and here in Australia, the Reverend Fred Nile of the um, Festival of Light will take over as compere of blankety blanks. <laughs> television will be so sterile You'll be able to heal wounds, just stand in front of it. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its five-year mission to try and boost the ratings. <laughs> to explore outer space. To seek out new worlds. To boldly go where no man has gone before. Yes, the most popular space series of all time is making a triumphant return to the screen. Thirty years ago, Mr. Sulu. I, I, Captain Quirk. <laughs> That's Kirk, not Quirk. <laughs> you Australians have funny names. <laughs> your favorite Star Trot characters, including the unemotional Mr. Spock. <laughs> Children's wear, Manchester, sporting dress. <laughs> uh... Why are you always so serious, Mr. Spock? Quite logical, really, Lieutenant. My father was a Vulcan, you see. He was a cool, boring, humorless man. His idea of a joke was to stuff pickled onions in your pocket. <laughs> Here is a visual reproduction of him on the scanner. Looking for a fun family day out? Then take the kids along to the Australiana Paradise Garden and Marine Land Zoo and see all the unique Australian species on display. See Rolf Harris's in their natural state. <laughs> Wonder at the rare lanky Yankee. <laughs> and while mum and dad relax in the sun, let the kids enjoy all the thrills of a Kamal ride. <laughs> Watch the Colonel Sanders feeding. <laughs> yes, they're all here just waiting for you to come visit. Australia's unique species all on display in their natural state. So come along and enjoy a fun family day out. Little tip off the old rock. <laughs>
here tonight. And here we see the impressive opening ceremony of these alternate Olympics, the commencement of the Games Australia excel in. Feel the tension here as Herb Howden is about to make his final throw. Here he goes. Oh, magnificent! Yes, that looks like a new record in the litter spray. On the blocks now for the 400 meter Australian style hurdles. Denning for Australia gets ready to better his last effort. And here he goes in this top event, the 25 meter phone box vandalizing final. An upset here in the final of the international whinging competition, with Great Britain taking out all places. So an old Pommy final, gold, silver and bronze in the winch. I've asked about 50 people maybe wearing quartz digital watches. Oh, how does it work? And the answer's always the same. Oh, it's uh, quartz, you know? <laughs> well, viewers, I do know. And believe you me, it's terrifying. <laughs> quartz. Scientists haven't discovered this amazing new power source called quartz. That's just a cover-up. <laughs> what they've really discovered is how to shrink people. <laughs> quartz, pig's armpit. <laughs> this watch is a tiny prison. Yes, it's been quite a reliable little unit, actually. I picked it up on my last trip to Hong Kong, or honkers as we call it. What does it do? Here, I'll demonstrate. Firstly, the time. That's 100% accurate and easy to read, day or night. Here, I'll show you. <laughs> on your feet, Sid. Show time. He wants to know the time. No, Professor, what's the time, mate? Oh, tell him ten past eight. Eight ten, Sid. <laughs> Up we go. <laughs> and now, the stopwatch. Oh, it's truth. He's got to do the stopwatch. I hate the stopwatch. One, two, two, three, three, four, four, eight, eight, oh, for five. <laughs> Nice band. Mind you, it does have its moments. <laughs> there are so many aerosol spray products on the market now and in the average home that it can become very confusing and sometimes painful and uncomfortable, as anyone would know that's ever sort of squirted under their armpits with Alberto V05. <laughs> for hard to hold hair. <laughs> now, a very simple solution for this would be to make all the products multi-purpose. How did he get in? Dirty, dangerous thing, a real menace, spreading disease. I'll drown the bugger in rapid shark. Having trouble with hubby shirts? Then take the worry out of ironing with pure and simple. It not only stops the iron from sticking, but it also lets Moonface's big head slip easily into his collar. Mortein House and Garden Spray. <laughs> Just the thing for keeping unwanted pests and insects out of your undergrowth. 
also promotes a good healthy plant growth while keeping aphis out of your armpits. <laughs> Pick the armpits you've grown to love. Silverfish, ants, bees, spiders, cockroaches. They're either a health hazard or just a plain nuisance, but not anymore. Dedex crawling insect killer is an effective insecticide you spray onto surfaces. Places where crawling insects could be a problem. There now. Any insects that crawl across that surface will die. It's hot out there today, Mr. Walker. Sure is. Don't the crowds annoy you, Mr. Walker? No. Doesn't anything at all bother you, Mr. Walker? Yes, batsmen and drop catches. Is that any good, Mr. Walker? I reckon it works longer than the other son. <laughs> I use it too, Mr. Walker. <laughs> Have a good weekend, Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. <laughs> you too, you dummy. I was bored with my life as a mechanic. Then a mate told me about life in the new army. The excitement of doing something different, the glamour of wearing a uniform. So I enlisted, and it's great. I'm proud of my job. I'm a McSoldier. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Jean! Jean, dear, quickly! It's that dirty old obscene phone caller again. Bitches like these for years. And let me tell you, they know what they like when it comes to food. And they love their pal. <laughs> and no wonder. Look what goes into every can. Delicious, tender, young, prime, lean, mouth-watering beef. Deliciously sautéed in marabone jelly. Oh, goodness. Delicious. <laughs> Good for you, Now comes a screen adventure, the likes of which you've never seen before. Wreckers of the Lost Park. <laughs> Tutamundra Hogue space the dangers of the Dubbo rainforests as he makes his way through the deadly Valley of Goanna. Oh, look, Tutamundra. Oh. Down with Marion. It's a killer koala. Oh. as they face the untold horrors of the Australian bush. Beyond the Marion. Well, I think it is. Bigfoot. i 
funny old fellow is One of the great Australian traditions when I was a kid was Saturday Arvo at the pitches. And it's died out a bit today and that's a great pity because it used to be the place where most kids had their first date. Excuse me, sir, but it's not polite to put your feet up on the seat. You want to make something of it? Yes, sir. <laughs> fly, do you fly up, mate? Oh, <laughs> Telecom today announced the introduction of two-way television. This new system will enable you the will enable you the viewer to become more involved in the programs because we will be able to see you, the viewer. Johnny, Eddie, Eddie, quick, quick, give it a look, come on. <laughs> the Minister for Post and Telecommunications, Mr. Staley, is quoted as saying. <laughs> meant to be easy. <laughs> Good on you, Kerry. And one of the things that, uh, that makes life not easy is the petrol shortage. But one of the good things to come out of it is that the push bike has made a big comeback. And that's terrific because riding push bikes is a really healthy pastime. Or is it? What's this?
Maybe the toughest hombre of all time. <laughs> Maybe he has learned to survive in a wasteland. Contemporary man viewers likes to keep abreast of technological developments and such. Naturally, I have the home video recorder, so I can record my favourite program when I'm too full, um, <laughs> when I'm otherwise occupied. You know, I've had a go on today to pick up my favourite daytime show today. I'll just see if, if she's working or not. Meet the Sullivans, Australia's favourite wartime family, now seen each weeknight, 7 o'clock, Channel 9. Yes, the Sullivans, a wartime drama that has captured the imagination of audiences everywhere. You'll share their happy times, their sad times. You'll experience the day-to-day -day drama of a family living in Australia while a brutal war rages overseas. The Sullivans. You'll meet the likeable <laughs> Uncle Harry and his dependable brother Dave. Grace, the steadying influence in the family circle. Tom Sullivan and his wartime digger mate Bert. Yes, the Sullivans. Ooh! <laughs> Weeknights at seven o'clock <laughs> all night. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to This Is Your Life. I'm your host, Roger Simpleton. Tonight's special guest of honour is inside this building and doesn't know we're about to sneak in and give him the surprise of his life. Let's sneak in now with our camera and surprise him. Look out for the doors! Travel all over the countryside, ask the Leylands, ask the Leylands, travel all over the countryside, ask the Leyland brother. If there's anything you want to know about this great continent of ours, then ask the Leyland brothers. Where do you reckon we are, Mike? Ask the Leyland, ask the Leyland, ask the Leyland. I know, man. <laughs> 
Come with us behind the walls of a women's detention center and meet the inmates. The beautiful, seductive, bad breath and foot odor, Karen. <laughs> Imprisoned for the brutal murder of an Avon lady. <laughs> and sympathetic wardens who treat their charges with love and... <laughs> Frankie, the lovable lesbian bikey. Arrested for trying to make love to her Kawasaki. <laughs> Prisoner, the show you'll find impossible to escape from. You'll never get out. The reasons that morale is down in this country is our demise in the world of sport. Take tennis, for, for example. Sure, the Aussie Sheilers did well and kept the flag flying at Wimbledon, but the men have gone down the sink. Because until recently, you couldn't name the top five tennis players in the world without naming at least two Australians. You know, Hoden, Roseville and Emerson, Laver, <laughs> Newcomb Roach, all champions and all gone. Well, Newcomb's still around, but the only time he shows any vigour these days is when he reaches for his brute. <laughs> There's plenty of skillful kids in the country, but against the likes of uh, bad boy Jimmy Connors, nasty Nastasi, super brat McEnroe, skill alone is not enough. And my government would set up these special clinics and teach our young sportsmen the art of gamesmanship. And pretty soon we'd be turning out winners just like this. Here he is, the darling of the Australian crowds, the man they all love to hate, Australia's own John McEnroe. Look at that fine.
Brian McEnhoog's backhand. Look at that. Well, this young superstar still makes time to mix with his adoring fans. What remarkable ability he has to put his opponent off his game. Super brat, but his courtside manners are impeccable. Oh. 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 A slight altercation with the linesman. Uh, rubbish, oh. But as always, a graceful loser. I can get by without um, crowded beaches. Um, I can get by without um, <laughs> bikini top. <laughs> I can get by without. Um, much of a brain. <laughs> um, I can get by without uh, <laughs> my legs. <laughs> I can't really get by with my legs. All right, mate, explain yourself. What's this about you resigning from the show? Yes, mate, well, this can explain better than I could, mate. It's me scrapbook. Open it at any page. Hogues, get rid of Strop. Sack Strop. Hmm. Strop a disaster. And that's just the headings, mate. That's a bit tough on you, mate. Hmm. Uh, that's not about me, mate. That's you. <laughs> well, I told you not to take notice of these whackers. Blimey. I mean, I mean, everyone has critics. I mean, or even the all-time great actors have their critics. Mm. Folks like Sir Lawrence Olivia, mm. Marlon Brando, Roy Rogers. Yeah, but no one ever, ever describes Sir Lawrence as a cretin and a lifesaver, that, mate. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Guess what I came dressed for the Fancher Dress Ball as, mate? I don't know. Well, seeing it's been held at the Scout Hall, I came dressed as a boy scout. <laughs> Did you decide what you're going to be dressed as, mate? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I've been practicing all afternoon. See that tape recorder out there? Hit the button, will you? Uh, hit the button. Mate, that's unbelievable. <laughs> He's always been one of my favourites, Tom Jones. <laughs> oh, excuse me, I've just been out there um, shelling the peas and fabulolling the frilly things what we Sheilas wear. <laughs> This is your wife? Yeah. <laughs> My Jessie's hell of a good cook. I think she'd have to be. Oh, well, why do you talk to man talk? I'll just nip over here and um, nip myself another tablecloth and uh, read about Ida's weekend on the farm. Okay, cupcake? <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> Can we get back to this text? <laughs> anyway, how am I going to replace you? Where am I going to get someone with your dramatic acting ability mm. and who also does all his own stunts? Haven't you had your go yet, mate? Hey. Oh. Oh, sorry, mate. I haven't been concentrating on me scrabble. I think I've got an ingrown toe now. Any excuse. Will you? Fix your toe, now, and then have you. <laughs> Thanks, mate. You know, mate, whenever I'm at home and I feel hungover or really, really depressed, I make me bomb. Never fails, you know. What's I'll make you one too. What's in it? Uh, first of all, a dash of the hair of the dog, room temperature. It's flat. Then, um, about a teaspoonful of salt. <laughs> teaspoonful of pepper. Too much, I'll have that one, mate. And I'm a uh, dash of tomato sauce. <laughs> Raw egg. <laughs> and, um, and a oyster, mate. <laughs> then, hold it. My secret ingredient. I get it. Go on. Mm. Stir with a spoon. Dipped in Vegemite. I oh, know this, mate. The old gag, right? You stir it up, you tip it down the sink, and you won't have a block drain for six months, right? No, mate. No. You drink it. Yeah. Oh, 
despair With unbearable sorrow Hate to run Where the brave dare not go This, viewers, this little device is a virtual ray gun. And these little remotes can clog the human brain. Haven't you noticed a number of people that appear regularly on television developing these peculiar little traits lately? Good evening. I'm Michael Cheeseburger. <laughs> All this week on a casual affair, we've been studying the drug scene. Tonight, we look at the deadliest, most addictive drug of all, food. Kate Ballyhoo reported inside this building is the man we believe is Mr. Big, the man responsible for bringing most of the fast food into this country. Let's burst in now with our cameras and surprise them. Southern fried beauty. There we are, there's the evidence. Keep the camera rolling, keep the camera rolling. <laughs> Excuse me, Colonel. Kate Dallahue, current affair. What the We'd like you to answer a few questions. What the finger licking hell do you think you're doing? We'd like man? to answer a few questions. Don't evade the issue. There is no comment. I say, no finger licking comment. <laughs> can you say? <laughs> we'll be back with another serious story in just a moment. Somewhere in our community there is a man going round stealing garden gnomes. Back in just a moment with a report on the garden gnome nap. <laughs> you are about to witness a crime. Watch. The lady distracts the victim. Man number one steals a wallet. Passes it to man number two, who slips it to girl number three, who hides the evidence. Watch again. Protect your trip. Carry American Express Travelers Checks. Only American Express can give you an emergency refund on weekends and holidays. Insist on American Express where you bank. Been robbed. Please. Please. Been robbed. You give us 60 seconds and we'll give you the works. Good evening. This is 60 seconds. I'm George Fungus. The latest proposal to deal with the fuel crisis. The suggestion that GMH recall all Holdens and replace them with the horse. <laughs> GMH, the horse of the year. Australia's biggest selling four-legged hardtop. Real tune suspension. Roomy interior. And look at the room in the boot. Yes, it's a whole new world as eager advertisers push their new products. Forcing authority, Peter Bakos, has this to say. Just tested the new Clydesdale, and believe me, its performance on the road is fantastic. <laughs> Two very popular cop shows in the United States have been cancelled this season because of excessive violence. And we've had the same problem out here because the cop show we were planning has been chopped out before it's even gone to where you might have seen a preview it. I'll just show you a brief preview to remind you of our cop show. Donna is coming. He's mean. <laughs> oh, 
Anyone ever tell you you've got a very cruel mouth? Like the way it curls up at the corner like that. If you want an opinion, I'll ask for it. He's tough. Who is it? Sergeant Gong of Plain Clothes Division. Here to rough you up. He's gonna tame this town. Now listen, Sonny boy. If you want to run an SP book in this town, you pay your commission, otherwise, you know what happens. Oh no. No, not the gut. Yes, the gut. The world is out on the streets. Donga is coming. This is uh, number ten on the countdown. Top, top ten is uh, Mr. Mr. Mark Holden. Yeah. Fantastic, amazing, so spunky. And, and now, after number 10 is... Uh, oh, number 9, number 9, number 9 on the countdown top 10. Shh, sh sh listen. He's a really nice guy, one of the nicest guys in the business, Mr. Brian Ferry, yeah. modern warfare equipment. You'll experience real comradeship and three square meals a day. to help keep this country safe. So come and join us. The Australian Army. We'll fight anyone, anywhere, anytime. We've never missed a war yet, and we're sure not gonna miss the next one. Even if we have to start it ourselves. <laughs> Good evening, voters. <laughs> You're probably wondering, what is a decent, honest, upright fella like myself <laughs> getting involved in the basically sleazy world of politics for? Well, I'm sure you know, all know the old saying, viewers, some men are born sleazy, <laughs> some aspire to be sleazy, while others have sleaziness thrust upon them. That's me, the third one. I more or less thrown my hat into the political ball ring at the request of a very dear, close, personal friend. Watch this clip, listen carefully, and you'll see why I couldn't refuse. And can you 
saved Australia out of this dreadful slump. Yes. Yeah, I can fix it up. Well, Holmes, are you willing to be Prime Minister? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good evening. Canberra. The Prime Minister today called a special cabinet meeting to reaffirm his policy of sharing the powers and responsibility of government with all his senior ministers. <laughs> and just finally, gentlemen, let me make it perfectly clear that all of you ministers are experts in your various fields and therefore your opinions are vital in the way this country is run. I'm not the type of leader that would force his attitudes, opinions, or tastes on other people. Thank you, gentlemen. Let's get out there and bore it up them. <laughs> anyway, out there, you's blubber gutted lot. This is want to trim the old lard bag off. You got to bend it. So, here we go with some toe touches. Oi, Delilah! Get out of here, love. Right, I'll get into some uh, toe touches and that. <laughs> here we go. One, two, one, two, one, two. Really good for the old comic cuts. <laughs> and not real bad for the optic nerve either, eh? <laughs> Okay, that'll do that, love. Ease it up. Now, the thing is this. If you really want to trim the waistline and that, you've got to do oh, the old sit-ups. Can't, can't beat sit-ups. So here we go with the half a dunger banana lounge sit-ups. Right, I love. Here we go. Oh, one. <laughs> Hey, I might be fat, but I'm not dumb. <laughs> Prime Minister Hogan today appointed as the new Minister for Education, Mr. Arthur Dunger. <laughs> Mr. Dunger said his first act would be the reintroduction of corporal punishment in all schools. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I'm in my bloody oath. <laughs> the buggers won't learn. Well, you've got to thump brains into it. <laughs> School, I had my brains thumped into me, and it bloody got me where I am. <laughs> Excuse me, Doctor. Um, <laughs> Mr. Woods to have his eyes tested. Oh, Mr. Woods, is it? Oh, come, come right in. Sit down. Have a chair. I'll be with you in just a moment. Oh, thanks very much indeed, Doctor. <laughs> uh, will that be all, Doctor? Uh, thank you, Nurse. <laughs> Uh, the problem, Mr. Woods. Can we help? Well, I. <laughs> I, uh, I just came to have one of the uh, free eye tests that you uh, advertised. Ah, the free test. I've been having trouble with the eyes. Have you been seeing things, having illusions, or anything like that? Well, uh, not, not until I came in here. Well, you're, you're probably going to think I'm crazy, Doctor, but I mean, when I came in here, the uh, nurse, and. Well, I could have sworn that you had blonde hair. Uh, I have, Mr. Woods. Oh. <laughs> oh, Doctor, I'm, I'm worse than I thought. Just relax, Mr. Woods, and leave it to me. Just sit there quietly, put this over your right eye. And we'll see what the problem is. Oh, now, give us a look here at the left eye. Just look at me. Mm, pretty normal. Now, cover this left eye, and we'll have a look at the right eye. Serious, eh, Doc? I'm afraid you're going to need glasses, Mr. Glasses? Woods. Glasses? Well, I don't oh. normally like to prescribe them, but uh, in your case it might be necessary. Just uh, have a look over here at the eye chart and read the bottom line, will you? <laughs> um, a... Oh, no, no, no. Uh, B... 
be. No, it's just no. as I suspected. Just, Sorry, just Dickson. relax, Mr. Woods. It's perfectly all right. Put these on. I think these glasses should do the trick. Just uh... <laughs> try it again. <laughs> Amazing. FWQP. <laughs> good, good. Yes, that's what you needed. Well, well, I have to wear them all the time, Doctor. Only if you want to see. <laughs> Such a lot you can share with kids. It's important to care for kids. <laughs> What's the matter, lady? Can't you get a taxi? Oh, I'll give you a lift up on. <laughs> it's important to care. Wonderfully exciting series, well, series bowls has been. As we uh, leave you now, here again are some highlights of the day's play. Lily's pounding down the Pascal's <laughs> making divots in the tree. Marsh is taking the Once he's clear and clear. The chapel's eyes have got that killer gleam. <laughs> Well, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching, viewers. Uh, but in this climate of political correctness, I just want to say that if you found anything in the show's offensive or anything you didn't like at all, I want you to now to ring Kerry Packer. His personal home phone number will be up on the screen immediately as I go off. And let him know. Thanks very much. <laughs>